Me that has to clean up after you. Lodgers can't pay their rent, coming and going all day, popping in and out the house like flies. And don't put your umbrella where it'll make a puddle either. I didn't take my umbrella this morning. Oh, shows you don't know our London weather yet. No, down in Sussex where I come from, it only rains every other day. There's a letter for you on the table. Nobody writes to me, it must be an ad. That letter looks like a wedding invitation to me. Yes, that's what it looks like. Who's it from? Dennis Bruce? Yes, it's from Mr. Bruce. When's it gonna be? It was yesterday. You could have knocked Mrs. Mackey and me down with a feather when he told us he was leaving to get married. He told me two months ago when I first met him here. He told me he was engaged to a girl in Edinburgh. Oh. Well, I expect Mrs. Mackey thought that you'd make him forget about her. That's ridiculous. I didn't even try to make him forget her. If you had, you wouldn't have to be looking for work now, would you? Or bother about the three weeks rent show, Mrs. Mackey. She's beginning to get worried. I've applied at all the employment agencies. I'll have a job soon. Of course, if you ain't aiming to, I... I know plenty of places you could get a job like mine. But I suppose a fine lady like you was trained for something better. The doctor said I've got to be careful for a few months. Oh. My sister had her appendix out, too. She was scrubbing and cleaning the very next week. Doesn't it bother her now? Nothing bothers her now. She's dead. But it wasn't good honest work that killed her. Bertha, here's a new agency I haven't been to. Secretaries wanted, excellent positions available. Apply at the Allison Employment Agency. Secretaries. Sitting writing all day. Call that work. If I go there right now, perhaps I'll get it. I've got to get it. Why did you come to London, Miss Ross? A London doctor was recommended to me. And you've quite recovered from your operation by now. Oh, quite. Quite. I, I'm strong as an ox. Mm, don't look it. You live with your family? No, I have no family. No husband? No young man? No. You're sure? Well, of course I'm sure. <laughs> I ask these personal questions because I have one very lucrative position open to a young woman with no family responsibilities. No romantic attachments. Mrs. Williamson Hughes, 190 Henrik Square. Mrs. Hughes has already had three secretaries from this office this year. Just as she was getting accustomed to each one, the girl would leave her because of a sick mother or a sister to care for or a young man. This time, Mrs. Hughes wants a girl who could definitely promise to stay at least a year. Oh, I'm sure I could. I have no ties and no young man. I'm absolutely alone. Your references seem to be in order. You just might suit Mrs. Hughes. Well, there's no harm in trying. I hope you're not lying in order to get the job. I need a job, but I'm not lying. My parents are dead. The closest relative I have is an aunt in America. 
Mrs. Hughes, I think I found an excellent girl for you. May I send her along for an interview? Oh, you'll be driving past here anyway. Certainly. I'll ask Miss Ross to remain and you could interview her here. Thank you. I think we shall suit each other very well indeed. Don't you, Miss Ross? I'll certainly try, Mrs. Hughes. <laughs> Miss Ross seems to answer all her requirements, doesn't she, son? Well, that's for you to decide, Mother. Well, I think we consider the matter settled. That is, uh, if the salary is satisfactory. Oh, indeed, it's more than generous. <laughs> then we'll expect you to move in tonight. Tonight? Oh, I see no sense in dilly-dallying once we've made up our mind, do you? The sooner you get settled, the better. I didn't know I was to live there. Mrs. Hughes always makes her secretaries very comfortable. They've all told me what a lovely house you have, <laughs> madam. I'm sure we shall do our best to make you happy with us. Now, you run along, pack your things, and we'll expect you in this evening. And, uh, just a little advance on your salary, just to bind the bargain. I really shouldn't. Oh, nonsense, my child. You take it and go shopping this afternoon. You're very kind, Mrs. Hughes. Thank you, Miss Allison. Good day, Mr. Hughes. Goodbye, Miss Ross. We'll see you this evening. Oh, we live very quietly. I expect everyone to be in the house by nine o'clock. I shall try to be there before that, Mrs. Hughes. Good. Have a nice time shopping. Thank you, I will. She's perfect. Mm-hmm. There's even a small resemblance. You've done very well, Sparks. Thank you, madam. Peters. Yes, Mrs. Hughes. Do you think she saw you? No, ma'am. No, I know she didn't, Mrs. Hughes. We'll see that you keep it that way, especially at the house. Well, we'd better hurry and close up the agency now. We shan't need it any longer. hanging up my second best suit. Where's your wife? Didn't you get married? Well, yes and no. We took out the license and sent out the announcements. Paid calls on all our friends and relatives. Somebody gave her a linen shower. I had a bachelor dinner. And I guess by that time we were too tired of each other to get married. She didn't like it when I kept calling her Julia. Why'd you call her that? Force of habit or something. And then she wanted to know who Julia was. So I told her how crazy she'd be about you if she knew you. I don't know why she should get so upset about this, do you? Well, yes, I do. No, I don't. Julia, come out with me tonight and help me figure out why I'm not more upset. I'd love to, Dennis. Oh, but not tonight. Any other night, but not tonight. I, I've got a new job and I've just about time to pack and get there. I'm living on the place, you see. What kind of a job? Secretary to a Mrs. Hughes. And her son? Nursemaid to a child? No, he's about your age. Oh. Well, I'll, I'll take you there. What is it? 190 Henrik Square. Oh, but I, I don't think you'd better take me there. You see, only this afternoon I told them I had no family and no young man. Well, I'm not your young man. Or am I? I don't know. Are you? See you tomorrow night. Friday, in the square at 7.30, right? Right. Mrs. Mackey! Mrs. Mackey! Mrs. M's gone to the cinema, leaving me with the dirty dishes. I'm leaving tonight, Bertha. This will explain to Mrs. Mackey why I left. I got a job at that new agency. She can send a receipt to this address. Now I've got to fly. Goodbye and good luck, Bertha. Thanks. For nothing. Ah, oh, 
Good evening, Miss Ross. Good evening. <laughs> I'm the doorman tonight. Mother's gone to bed, the maids have gone to the cinema, and, well, I hope you don't mind my showing you up to your room. Not at all. Please, let me help you. Thank you. to sleep. Well, all the time we need. These are all her things. I want all her clothing destroyed. Every bit of it. The bag, too? The bag, too. Mrs. Hughes, Ralph. Ralph! Put that knife away. Try to remember that weren't for your temper, you wouldn't be in this awful trouble today. I'm sorry. Very well. Now we've all got jobs to do. Let's do them. Looking for something, sir? Uh, yes, I was looking for someone. Well, you won't find them in there. They've all gone. It seems deserted. Oh, not a stick in the place. They left last night. Oh, maybe it was first thing this morning. Nobody saw them go. I say, do you know where they moved to? Not me, sir. People offer moves like that, you know, sudden like. But, uh, Julia, she would have left word. The relative, sir? My girl. Would you care to come down to the station and make a statement, sir? Uh, no, no, it's probably nothing. There must be a simple explanation. Why, of course, sir. You'll probably be hearing from her in the morning, I hope. Thank you, officer. Good night. Good night, sir. But, Mrs. Mackey, are you sure Julia didn't leave a forwarding address with you? You see, I may have made a mistake in the number of the house. Miss Julia Ross left nothing with me, and I made a great mistake in trusting her for the rent. She ups and sneaks out of me without paying when my back was turned. I don't believe that. You believe it fast enough if it was you that was being done out of two pounds ten? Why, the wicked girl only left two pounds. What did you say? I said she was a wicked girl to leave Owen an honest debt. Hand it over. Go on. It's you that's the wicked one. I was only keeping it for you. Yes, well, I'll be keeping a call for the police if you do it again. I won't, Mum, I won't. I'm sorry. Didn't you leave a note with a new address on it? I tore it up. But you remember the number, don't you? What, me read someone else's letters? Bertha, you've got to remember. 
Well, she got the job through the Allison Employment Agency from an advertisement in the paper. Well, they'd know the address, wouldn't they? Ah, good girl, Bertha. Allison Agency. Well, they won't be open at this hour. Hello, chum. You know, you're wasting your time on that there door. Well, I've got to find it tonight. Tonight, then? Flew the kilt there. It comes and goes here faster than the favourite at Aintree. Well, perhaps I could get a forwarding address from the landlord. Oh, I'm the landlord, and when they flies the coop, I'm always the first that knows about it. There's one thing about this here building, you know, there ain't no questions asked. What a body doesn't know, don't hurt him, I always say. I don't know where else to look. Why don't you let it go till morning? Night's no time for looking for a job or work. Night's for play. You feel better today. Who are you? My name's Alice, Mum. Now, here's your breakfast. No, I don't want any, thank you. That calendar over there, that says Saturday. It isn't Saturday, is it? It's Friday. It must be Friday. No, Mum, it's Saturday, all right. You slept all day Friday. I expect you was tired out after your journey. Well, how did I get here? Where is this? Why, Mum, you're right here in your new home that's been ready and waiting for you for over a week. Expecting you every day, I was, after getting the wire to say your folks had taken Sea House and wanted it scrubbed and clean. I expect they had to wait until you was well enough to travel. But Cornwall's a good, healthy place, and the sea air will soon get you well. Cornwall? But that's miles from London. In our village, that's Beverton, you know. There's just as good and better in London. Now, have a sip. 
I must get back to London. No, you mustn't get up, Mrs. Hughes. Mrs. Hughes? Please stay in bed, Mrs. Hughes, or you'll make yourself worse. Oh, I'd better get your husband. He's been that worried about you. My husband? Mrs. Hughes? Marion, darling. How do you feel? Well, you look better this morning. Much better, doesn't she, Mother? Indeed she does. My name isn't Marion, and I'm not married to you or anyone. I was engaged as a secretary. Now, what does this all mean? Why did we leave London? You haven't forgotten us again, have you, Marion? I'm not Marion, and you know it. All right, dear. Let's not argue. Let's just have our tea and perhaps another nap, and, and then you'll feel much better. I'm afraid it's cold. Oh, Alice, uh, bring some more hot water quickly, please. Yes, Mum. I don't know what this is all about. But I promise you some very serious trouble unless you stop it immediately. You know perfectly well I'm Julia Ross. Marion, dear, please don't excite yourself so. You'll just bring on another attack. Attack? Attack of what? Nerves, dear. Just nerves. Oh, we do so want you to know you're with your own family. Oh, nonsense. Marion, darling, control yourself. Let me go. We are doing everything in our power to make you well again. Let me go! If you don't stop this, I'll have you arrested! Why are you doing this? It's so stupid. It's so silly. That's the woman from the agency. What's she doing here? Alice, bring the hot water, quickly. Yes? Alice, you live in the village, don't you? Then help me. I'm not his wife. I don't know what's happening or why. But please, call the police. Call someone. Help me. Well, of course Alice will help you. We'll all help you now. Just have your tea. Alice, we've got some errands for you to do in the village. Yes, ma'am. I won't have it. It's probably got sleeping powders in it like the other did. Drink your tea, Marion. Who'd she say you were? Well, some woman from some agency. Last week she said I was the queen. Coming down in the world, aren't you? It's a fair caution. If you didn't know she was, well, like she is, you'd swear she was telling the truth. It's a heavy burden on Mr. Ralph and his mother. They've spent a fortune on doctors. Will she always be balmy? We just say she's ill. And when you go into the village, I don't want you gossiping about the family. Oh, no, Mrs. Sparks. I'm a close mouth, I am. Of course we don't want to appear. Standoffish, so you can answer any questions about Oh, I won't breathe a word about her being balmy. something at him. At home, dear. I thought it was you. Well, darling, I've been asleep. You've had another nightmare. But he was real. I saw his eyes right there glaring at me. That's what you saw. Why, of course. It was the cat. You saw his eyes in the mirror and thought it was someone. I saw a man's hand right here on the bed. But no one could have got into the room. I locked the door. Uh, in case you walked in your sleep and hurt yourself. And the man must still be in here somewhere. Well, you better have a look. If no one could get into the room, where did the cat come from? Perhaps the window. Not even a cat could climb those walls.
Ralph, stop that. You see there's no one here. You'd better take the cat away, clear up that glass in the morning. Yes, madam. If you're nervous, Marion, would you like me to stay the rest of the night with you? Why did you bring me here? What are you planning to do with me? Are you trying to drive me crazy? Is that it? Tell me what you're planning to do with me! Nothing, Marion. Nothing but try to make you well, dear. That's all. Why don't you leave the light on, if you're frightened? Good night. Oh, uh, Mrs. Mackey, anything for me? Nothing for you. Are you sure? She ain't had time to write a letter yet. It's only Mandy. You're going to make yourself late at the office for nothing. The legal profession doesn't keep me that busy, Mrs. Mackey. She's had three days to explain. Ah, women never explain, especially if they're wrong. It'll probably come in the afternoon post uh, here. Oh. If it does come, this afternoon or any time, call me at the office. You know the number, and I'll give you another five shillings. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Bruce. breakfast tray, Mrs. Hughes. Oh, Alice, I didn't hear you. Were you looking for something, Mum? Is there another entrance to this room? Another entrance? They keep my door locked, but... That's to protect you, Mum. Against yourself. But someone gets in here. Oh, if they want to kill me, why haven't they already done it? Headache, Mum. And why not? Sleeping pills to keep me down and prowlers to keep me awake. Alice, will you help me? Will you do something for me? Of course, Mum. If you'd go to the police for me on your day off, I'd promise to send your money back from London. You're making yourself ill, Mum. It's not right. Begging your pardon, Mum. You have a beautiful home, nice relations, pretty clothes, everything a woman would want. Oh, nonsense. Of course you have, Mum. You're letting yourself be took up by illusions, letting it gnaw at you and gnaw at you. It's all in the mind. People can think themselves into anything. Why don't you think you're getting well, Mum? I tell you, I'm not ill. Alice, if you do as I ask... You may go, Alice. Yes. Well, Marion, up and about. I'll go crazy if you don't let me out of this room. Forced to drink that tea, my arm all bruised. Bruised? I'm going to dress and go downstairs. But of course, dear. No one will stop you. The change might do you good. My size. Naturally. It was made for you, Marion. You needn't call me Marion when we're alone. I know perfectly well you only do it to impress Alice. And if there was a Marion Hughes, where is she? Do her in and come downstairs, dear. must try to be more cautious and not let your temper sway you. All right, Mother. It's lucky I saw those bruises before someone else did. I had to force her to drink the tea, didn't I? You don't have to leave evidence. Stop it! Stop it!
wires going toward the road. Be careful. Hughes. I'm going for a walk. Please open the gate. I'm sorry, ma'am, but I got my orders. Listen, it's all wrong what they've told you about me. I'm not crazy. I don't look crazy, do I? Well, nobody ever said that, Mrs. Hughes. It's just that you, well, need a bit of looking after, like. I'll go and phone the house, ma'am. They'll be fretting about you. Oh, please don't do that. What are you doing away out here? I... nothing. I, I wanted to go for a walk. I was just calling the house, Mr. Hughes. Thank you. It's all right now. I'd enjoy a walk too, dear. Let's have a look at the grounds. Thank you, Evans. I've been wondering if maybe you and your mother aren't right about me. I've been thinking maybe I really have been ill. Have you, Mary? Yes. So I've been trying to look back and remember things. What was my name before we were married? Campbell. Marion Campbell. And what about my family? Where are they? Your parents are dead, Marion. Haven't I any family at all? No one to visit me? No. Or to write? Beautiful, isn't it? Would you like to listen to the sea and hear what it says? It doesn't say anything, does it? That's what I like about the sea. It never tells its secrets. But it has many, very many secrets. I'd like to go to a doctor. Alice says there's a good one in the village. I'm sure he could help me. You've been to the best specialist in London. You know, I'm a very lucky man to find such an attractive wife. Where did you find me? I can't remember. Switzerland. What were we doing there? I was visiting some people. You were in school. What school? Why not try to remember more pleasant things? Like our honeymoon. Someone from the village to see us. Tell him not to let them in. No, no. Let it look out. Let them through, Evans. Yes. 
You better keep Marion in her room while they're here. This is my daughter-in-law. Oh, I'm the vicar, Jonathan Lewis. Oh, yes. uh, this is my sister, Mrs. Robinson, oh, and uh, her husband. How do you do? Perhaps we've come calling at a bad time. Oh, but we did want you to feel that the village welcomes you, <laughs> that you have friendly neighbors. Oh, won't you come in? Uh, thank you. Uh, this is my son. Uh, Ralph, this is our vicar. How do you do? How do, you uh, do? Mrs. Robinson. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, Mr. Robinson. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Please listen to me. They're holding me here by force. I don't know why, but you must call the police. I'm terribly sorry, but my daughter-in-law is upset today. Uh, Ralph, it's so nice of you, Vicar, to come and call so promptly. <laughs> and Mr. and Mrs. Robinson, too. Indeed, the whole village is so friendly and charming. Why, we're, we're quite in love with it. No, it's not true. Oh, why doesn't somebody listen to me for once instead of leaving her all the time? I'm so sorry. I missed going into church yesterday. Both my son and I wanted to go, but... but Poor Marion was quite exhausted with the journey, and we couldn't leave the poor dear alone. Uh, won't you come and sit down? Uh, Mrs. Robinson, uh, sit here, won't you? Vicar. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. I suppose they've already heard about me in the village, haven't they? I suppose so. Gossip travels very quickly. There isn't much they don't know about my little wife. But there's one thing you don't know. The police will be here today, and you'd better see to it that I'm all right when they come. You mean because of this note? The one the gatekeeper found? Isn't that an awful exhibition? But how they look poor Mrs. Hughes in the face. But poor Mr. Hughes, I was thinking. I'll crawl in back. There's plenty of room up here, dear. The young husband doesn't say much, but you can see he feels it deeply. He talks about her in such a gentle way. So touching. Perhaps a rest in a quiet place like this will do her good. Their maid Alice told our cook the poor girl is steadily getting worse, though the family refused to admit it. Susan, you shouldn't listen to gossip. But how did it happen? It was a breakdown about a year ago. They've been to every doctor in the country. Oh, Jonathan, do be careful of those girls. I forgot to ask Mrs. Hughes something. It won't take a moment to drive back. I beg your pardon, sir. Have you seen my wife? Yes, she's here. You'll find her in the back seat of the car. She couldn't have made a better impression for us if we planned it ourselves. Everyone knows she's not responsible for anything she may do. Then why don't we get it all over with right now? Because there's still one last step, the most important. What's that, Mother? Our best alibi. What do you want? 
That's not a very friendly way for a wife to greet her husband. Wife? Please don't be afraid of me. For a while today, I thought we were going to be friends, the way we used to be. Why don't you stop this farce? It's not a farce. I've always loved you, Marion. Or would it make any difference if I called you Julia? Get out of here. Stop it! Alice! <laughs> Marion, how could you do such a thing? Mrs. Hughes tried to throw us up out of the window. Get my mother, hurry. Yes, sir. And then get someone from the village to come up here and put some bars on these windows. It isn't safe to leave my wife alone any longer. Quick! Good morning, Mum. Good morning. My goodness, Mum. Didn't you go to bed at all last night? No, and why should I? I can't sleep and I can't eat either. Take that away. Take it away. It's probably poisoned. Oh, no, Mum. You mustn't excite yourself like this. Why not? Locked up like an animal with someone trying to kill me. Don't say that, Mum. You're like all the rest of them. What's going on here? She's all upset, Mum. And who wouldn't be? How would you like to be in my place? Never allowed out of here for a moment. They're afraid to let me out. They're afraid of what I'll tell about them. They don't even dare let me take a drive through the village for fear that people will find out how they treat me. They'd love to take you out for a drive, Mum, if that's all you want. It'd do her good, of that I'm sure. Why, of course. I think it's a wonderful idea. You can drive along the coast road, up to Observation Point. I want Alice to go along, too. I have a good deal of work to do, Mum. Please, Alice. Run along, Alice. Your work can wait. Go down and tell Sparks to bring the car round. Yes, Mum. I'll be ready in a moment. Well, there's no great rush, dear. You must give Ralph time to have his breakfast. I think it's another scheme to get away. Sure it is. It, and no harm done. But why let her think she succeeded? And why not? It's what the villagers think that counts now. I want them to see how kind you are to her, especially after yesterday. Closer, so that people can see what a handsome couple we are. Shouldn't she, Alice? Writing to someone? Yes, a friend in London. You haven't sealed it. What difference does it make? I know you won't let me send it. <laughs> what an imagination. Why should I stop you? As soon as we get to the village, you can post it. Mrs. Robinson. Oh, 
Good morning, Mr. Hughes. Good morning. And Mrs. Hughes. Nice to see you out. And are you feeling a little better today? I've never been ill, thank you. Uh, give me your letter, dear. I'll mail it for you. I'd rather mail it myself. Good day, Mrs. Robinson. Good day. Just a moment. Wave to Mr. Robinson, dear. When will this letter get to London? Tomorrow. That's fine. Thank you. It was a pleasure, my dear. How much longer is it going to be? The whole plan had to be convincing. Now we can make it look like suicide. But when? Tonight. If by chance that Dennis Bruce should come, I don't want us still here. How will he find his way here? The postmark, of course. The postmark on the letter? I never thought of that. Why did you take such a chance? It wasn't much of a chance. Nobody in Beverton ever heard of Julia Ross. That's true. Nobody but Sparks and Peters. I'd like to throw them in the sea, too. Oh, no, they're all right. We know too much about them. It's all Marion's fault. She shouldn't have cried. Ralph, you never told me. Was it an accident? Or did you intend to kill her after she'd made her will? I didn't plan it. I liked her well enough. But when she found out I'd been lying about my income, she accused me of marrying her for her money. I said, of course, that's what I married her for. Then she cried. She was always crying. Then she slapped me. I had my knife in my hand and I... Stop it! Stop it! Don't do that. Put that away. to help you. I still say we should have called the police and told them a prowler broke in and killed her. With the marks of your fingers on her, the scratches on your face. No, we couldn't let anybody see her.
Get the doctor, quick. What? Poison. She's lying there on the floor. Better get a doctor. Run downstairs. Tell Sparks to bring egg white, milk, mustard, anything she can think of. Yes. Why try to save her? Let her die. It's what we want. Don't be so stupid, Ralph. If she's taken poison, we must act as though we cared. If she's taken poison? Maybe just a trick to get a doctor here. We can't let her see a doctor. No. It's easy enough to fool stupid villagers into thinking she's crazy that a doctor would know better. What'll we do? If she's really taken something, she may die quickly. If she hasn't, I'll call her a doctor. Marion, dear, here's the doctor. He's come to help you. I want to speak to the doctor alone. Go away. Yes, dear. Doctor, listen. I haven't taken poison. And I'm not Marion Hughes. I'm Julia Ross and I can prove it. If you'll only believe me for just a second and call Dennis Bruce in London, he'll tell you all about me. Then you really didn't take anything. No, I just said that to get you here. You've got to get me away. To a hospital if you think I'm crazy, or anywhere, just to get me away from here. I know I sound crazy, but that's what they want everyone to think. Because he killed his wife and she's lying out there at the bottom of the sea. And now they have to have someone to bury in her name. What makes you believe all this? I heard them talking. If you can only get me away from here for a few hours, that's all I ask. Till tomorrow morning. Then Dennis will be here and your responsibility will be over. My dear, this is all very puzzling. How do I know that this friend of yours will ever get here? I got a letter off to him. They thought it was just a blank sheet of paper. But I had a second letter. I fooled them. I really sent that. When did you post it? Yesterday. It ought to be there today. Enough of that, Peters. Peters. Then you're not really a doctor. I told you not to let her post it. May not have reached him yet. Peters, you must hurry up to London and get that letter before it's delivered. Take the car and drive as fast as you can. I don't know where he lives. Dennis Bruce, 51 Carrington Street, in Bloomsbury. Dennis Bruce, 51 Carrington Street. I brought up the car, Mrs. Hughes. We're not too late. No. Did you find out what she took? Oh, she didn't really take anything, Doctor. She admitted that she just meant to frighten us. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry you've had this wild goose chase. But uh, now that you are here, perhaps you'd be good enough to take a look at her. You might give her something to calm her. Certainly. Oh. Marion, open the door. Go away. I don't want to see anybody. But Marion, dear, please, don't be afraid. The doctor won't hurt you. No, he won't hurt me. He'll just kill me. That's what you want him to do. You all want me dead. It's hopeless. Hopeless. She, she'll never recover. Oh, Doctor, what are we to do? She thinks we're all her enemies. Tried to kill herself, she did. There's no use trying to see her now. She's too upset. I'd suggest taking her to the hospital and keeping her under observation for a while. Oh, but, uh, 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 my son refuses to have her taken away. Yes, but for her own protection. I must try to persuade my son. He, he's so devoted to Marion. But if, if we say it's just for observation... And then I'll make all the arrangements. Possibly I could come for tonight. Oh, I, I think it'd be better if you waited till the morning. Oh, very well. I hope we can help her. I hope so too, Doctor. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mrs. Hughes. Ralph, the Doctor will come for her in the morning. She'll be ready. Yes? 
Do you have a room for rent? Yes. Third floor back, 20 shillings a week, paid in advance and no cooking. I'll take a look at it. Well, I'll send the girl up with you because the doctor says I've got to spare myself as much as I can. Bertha! Bertha! You know, that girl's never around when she's wanted. Anyway, it's a very tidy room and as quiet as a tombstone. That's fine, I'll take it. I don't have to see it. The children and I will move in tonight. Yeah, what children? My two little girls. Oh, you like them. They're full of life. Sorry, Rocking sorry, but I there. never take children. Anyway, the room's taken. But I've got to have a room. I've been turned out of my last place. Well, you can try lower down the street. Miss Ellingsworth, I think she takes them. It's just round the corner. Oh, I'll rush down there once. Thank you very much. Children and dogs. Who ever heard of such a thing? Mr. Blue. That's funny. That's funny by that. It was here a minute ago. Why, there was only him and me. Here, wait a minute. Hey! Hey there! Here, stop that man! Stop him! Stop that man! Police! She'd be too excited. Well, she saves a lot of trouble. Now this happened, I'm frightened. We have nothing to fear. We'll be telling the truth when we say it's suicide. Yes. 
Who's the weak one now? Come, let's go down there. Mrs. Hughes, I've had an emergency call, which will take me away all day tomorrow. Doctor, I'm so glad you're here. She must have heard us talking about taking her away. She's always threatened to kill herself before she'd be locked up. But, uh, she hasn't. Yes, and I blame myself. Well, she'll be all standing here talking and doing nothing. Oh, God. Ray, how am I? Nurse, I'll go down with them. You telephone for an ambulance. Yes, Doctor. Down there before the doctor does. She'll surely be dead, but just in case she isn't. Oh. Well, come along, Mrs. Hughes. Yes, thank you. Lucky we met her on the road. Men, men, oh, darling, I, I don't know what to say. There's nothing for you to say. You're both under arrest. We caught Peters in London. Peters? Yes. time I apply for a job, I'll ask for the references. I know a good job. Secretary? Oh, a combination secretary, nurse, companion, that housekeeper. That sounds like a wife. Well, how about it? I'll have to have some time to think it over. How long? Oh, about five seconds. One, two, three, four, four. <laughs> 